What's up, YouTube? We back with another video, man. Today we got a different little video, man. This for my for all my college basketball folks, man. Today we gonna be um we gonna we not reacting to nothing. We just be filling out the bracket. I'm filling out my bracket, as y'all see right here on ESPN. Create a bracket. I'm filling out my first, my first and only bracket. I'm filling out. This say you can fill out one of three brackets. I'm filling out one bracket, bro. I think I feel like you're cheating when you do more than one bracket. In the past, I've done more than one bracket. First of all, they never they never be accurate. But <clears throat> I think the best I've done one year, I, I think I got like I got like seventy percent right, which was amazing to me. But um, yeah, man, I feel like you do more than one bracket this year. I'm doing just one bracket. Hey, if it go to shit, if, it, if it's busted after the first two games, oh well, bro. I'm doing one bracket, man. Uh, we're going to start here in the East region. Let's start in the East region. Can I make this bigger? Let me see something. Oh, not that damn big. All right, so we're going to start here in the East region where we got the number one overall seed, UConn Huskies. One through one and sixteen matchup easy UConn. All right, so that's easy. Next matchup we got eight C FAU versus nine C Northwestern. Now FAU a team I didn't watch plenty this year. Northwestern, even though I'm right here in Chicago, I've not watched them. Like I, <laughs> real talk, even right here I ain't react to them not once this year I believe. But they are in the Big Ten. You know, um, I am here up north so. I do see a lot of Big Ten games, and I just haven't seen them. But I don't think they're being FAU anyway. I think FAU, they had a very up and down, inconsistent season. A lot of people, some some analysts and stuff, believe they got overseeded maybe. But they've been in and out the top 25 all year long because it's just been inconsistent. They beat some good teams, and then they lose to some teams they probably shouldn't lose to, um, including Temple and the... Um, in the conference tournament, but Temple made a crazy run all the way to the championship game. But I think FAU and their experience um, gets them through this game. This is a team that returned pretty much everybody from that Final Four team last year. I think they know what to do in the tourney. They know how to win these games. I think they get past Northwestern. Speaking of this bracket, this this region, man, everybody knows this. Everybody has said UConn, the defending champs, and no one team all year long, got the toughest region in, in the entire tournament this is crazy i mean uconn fau and san diego state all three teams were in the final four last year they all got final four experience um then you got auburn just won the sc championship you got um illinois in this bracket just won the big 10 championship you got iowa state just beat houston by 30 in the big 12 championship like this 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 division this bracket is loaded byu is a good team Man, this division. This next game is also a really good one. San Diego State, UAB. UAB just won the um, American Conference Championship game. That's going to be a really, really good game. But like I said with FAU, I think San Diego State and their experience in this tournament, making that Final Four run last year. The defense, I always know San Diego State team comes with. I think they win this game and move on. Um, Up next, we got Auburn and Yale. Um, This is not even a debate. I'm going Auburn, man. That. I, like, I really like Auburn team. I know, obviously, I'm a big Blue Nation, I'm a Kentucky fan, but I really do like Auburn and Bruce Pearl. I like, I like um, year in, year out, I like how they play style. I like the kind of guards he brings there. He always brings them, them guards that's going to be scrappy, that's going to be tough, that's going to get to the rim. Um, I really like that Auburn team right there. Um, I actually had picked Auburn and Kentucky to meet in the SC Championship game. Obviously, we lost, but Auburn ended up winning it. Next, you got... Damn, why I keep moving up? All right, you got BYU and um, du Duquesne, du du the Dukes. I think they the Dukes. No, nah, I don't know. I don't know how to say their name. We don't have to worry about saying their name because I'm going BYU. BYU playing a tough Big 12. Another team I ain't really watched particularly too much this year, but I know they was in and out that top 25. They're a good team. Um, Illinois Moorhead State, man. Illinois just won, went on, ripped off and won. Um, the Big Ten tournament, Terrence Shannon been going crazy. Um, you got Demonis, I think the other guard name. You got um, Hawkins, the big man. You got some. This is a really good Illinois team. This is like my second team outside of you know going for Kentucky because obviously I do live here in Illinois. My mom graduated from there. 
Um, I got no, I got other family members that graduated from there. So that's my second team. Uh, Brad Underwood, the head coach there, I actually met when he was at Stephen F. Austin. I went to the camp in, at Stephen F. Austin because I used to live in Texas. For a fact, for y'all, I went to his camp. So I met him like a year or two before he ended up leaving there. He, fun fact, another fun fact. He told me he wasn't leaving. <laughs> he told me my, my, well, he didn't tell me, but my um, my parents was talking to him, just asking about his plan, future plans, and he said, "No, I'm here to stay." Yeah, his ass was gone. So, <laughs> but I got Illinois winning this game, man. I think Illinois got a chance to make a run this year. Up next, we got Washington State seven ten matchup. Washington State Drake, Drake, two teams I really have not watched. I mean, Washington State's a team. They they're on the um out Pac twelve West Coast late night games. I definitely have not tuned in and watched Washington State one time this season. So this make this pick pretty difficult, bro. I'm, I'm not a no full-time ESPN analyst that watch all the film on all these teams. So, it makes this pick difficult, but this will make the, the bracket fun. I'm picking the upset. I got Drake winning this game. I've seen... I haven't seen Drake. I've seen him in the championship game um, that they played. But, besides that, I just feel like, shit, Drake gonna come out with it. Um, I would love to pick a, a 15 over 2 upset again this year. How we had Preston over Arizona last year. And you know, the 15 2 is a lot more common than the 16 1 upset that's only happened twice. But it won't be this one. I would say just won the Big 12 Championship by 30. Um, another team I haven't got a really chance to tune into till later in the season. I did see them play a little bit later in the season when I realized how good they was. They, they had got, you know, been in the top 10. Um, yeah, I got them winning that game. All right. Um, let's finish this whole side of the bracket before we move on. So now we got the round of 32 where we get the 1-8 matchup, UConn versus FAU, two teams that was in the Final Four last year. Um, this could be a great, this could be, FAU was a, 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 a buzzer beater away from um, playing UConn in the championship game last year. Literally, San Diego State hit the bus beater in the Final Four against them. They were that bus beater not happened away from playing UConn in the championship game last year. This is gonna be a hell of a game, but I can't go with FAU. UConn been the best and most one of the most consistent teams all season long. FAU been very inconsistent. I think FA. I mean UConn matches up incredibly well with FAU. You know they got they got guard play. They got that one big. UConn got all of that. So, yeah, UConn definitely wins that game. Auburn, San Diego State, boy, this is going to be a game right here. You want to see, you're going to see, you're going to see defense. You're going to see a bunch of tough guards. It's going to be a bunch of tough guards. I think this could go either way, but I'm going to take Auburn guard play and Bruce Pearl. He know how to get it done in March. San Diego State can't say they don't know how to get it done. They just made the Final Four. Um, this is a toss-up. This could go either way. This could be one of them games where it's going to be, I think it might be low scoring. Tough, a lot of defense. Um, oh boy, this is gonna be a game right here, man. This is a tough one to decide right here. This is gonna be a game, man. This is gonna be a game. I'm gonna go Auburn. I'm gonna go Auburn. Auburn to the Sweet 16 to, fa to face UConn. All right, now we got um, the two and the, no, the three and the six. Illinois versus BYU. Illinois been hot, like I said. I think Illinois wins this game. Um, and then you got Iowa State versus Drake. I think Drake run stops here, and Iowa State wins that game. So now the Sweet 16. Now this could be wrong. You sometimes it happens, sometimes it don't. When you got the top four seeds all making it to a Sweet 16, I got that with this bracket, and um, I got UConn beating Auburn. I think that'd be another tough game, but I just think UConn gonna be too much for Auburn. And then I got um. Illinois is beating Iowa State. I think Illinois, both teams coming off conference championship games, so they both equally hot. But I think Illinois gets it done. I think that's a really good team. I think they had a few slip-ups throughout the year. But I think this team is a lot better than, hey, they damn near could be a two-seed. I, I think I, I got, I think Illinois is really, really good. And, um, they move on to face UConn in the Elite Eight. And here... This is where Illinois hot streak. This is where they run ends. I think UConn wins this game. I think UConn's coming out of the toughest region and going to the Final Four. I think that highly of UConn. They are a really, really good team. Um, Tristan Newman, the point guard. You got Stefan uh, Castle, the freshman guard. 
You got the big man that's probably going in the lottery. Um, you got some players for this UConn team. This team, this team, yeah. Yeah. Very, very good team. All right, let's move on. We're going to go to the the west region of the bracket where you have North Carolina as the number one seed. And North Carolina would be moving on to the second round no matter who they're playing, Howard or Wagner. Does not matter. 8-9 um, matchup. We got Mississippi State versus Michigan State. Now, this right here is a game, man. Mississippi State, obviously, I'm familiar with because they're in the SEC. And they just beat us not too long ago. They just beat us, literally. And um, they got a freshman guard, Josh Hubert, I think. He's tough. They got some good guard play. But you got Tom Izzo and Mich Michigan State. Um, had 14 losses this year. I found that very interesting. They made the tournament as a nine seed. They were like 19 and 14. Um, I wasn't too tuned in with Michigan State this year. Uh, but apparently they they, they they were safely in the bracket. Then started playing their way onto the bubble with some late losses. But um, I know they had a very competitive schedule. They played some good teams this year. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't have a cupcake schedule. They played some really good teams this year in the non-conference and you know, obviously playing in the Big Ten. Um, and it's something about Izzo, man. Something about Tom Izzo. I can't go against in March. He gonna have his team ready. Um, yeah, man. We gonna go with Michigan State to move on. So now let's move on. We got. 5-12 matchup. Now, this is one of the matchups I've been waiting to get to right here, man. 5-12 matchups are very, very interesting this year. Very, very interesting this year. Because we all know the 5-12 matchup is one of them that you, one of them upsets that, you know, happens. I know a lot of people are going to be picking Grand Canyon this year. A lot of people are going to be picking Grand Canyon to win this game. And um, I got to get some upsets in this bracket, man, because you know they're going to happen. I'm going to take Grand Canyon as well. I was gonna, I was gonna be, you know, a lot of people gonna take Grand Canyon. It's probably gonna be a, it's probably gonna be a high percentage on Grand Canyon, and I was gonna be one of the ones that was just gonna be different. And go ahead, and pick St. Mary's, but Grand Canyon got an NBA wing. They got a guard that's that that has some NBA potential. He could get drafted. He's really athletic. He's um really good player. He was the WAC Player of the Year. Um, and they hot right now. They just won the conference championship game. Against UTA and they blew them out. I actually saw the highlights of that game. They blew them out. They play up and down. They want to get up and down the court. They play fast. Uh, St. Mary's going to slow them down. They're going to want to slow them down. They're going to want to play in the half court. Make them play half court defense. Um, and they're going to want to slow the game down. Make Grand Canyon play in the half court. Now, have I watched Grand Canyon know, enough to know if they can play in the half court? I have not. But if they play their game and get St. Mary and get to run running and pressuring the ball on St. Mary's and all that stuff. I think Grant Canyon could come out with a win. Um, moving on, we got Alabama Charleston. Um, oh, I didn't know you could do previews. Okay, let me see something. It's not really tell me much, but um, Charleston. I had I, during the during the um the the selection show. They said Charleston's twenty and zero when they score eighty plus points. That to me says that they could score the ball. Alabama, uh, I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. Now, I think this is a 4-13 matchup. No, obviously, I'm going to go with Alabama, but I think I think this is going to be a much closer game than people expect. I think I think Charles gives them a run for their money for quite a while in this game. I think Alabama probably pulls it out late, but I think this could be a game right here. And Charleston usually have teams. They've been in the tournament a couple of times, multiple times now. They usually have teams that can shoot the three ball really well. They usually have teams that can shoot the three ball really, uh, really, really well. Um, I think that's a lot closer game than people expect right there. But uh, moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. We got Clemson 6 seed versus 11 seed New Mexico. This going to be a game, fellas. This going to be a game right here. I got New Mexico winning this game against Clemson. I like Jalen House, uh, Mash Burn, the guard play they got at New Mexico. I really like I think Jalen Howe's gonna come with a chip on his shoulder, something to prove. Um, yeah, I, I like new, I like that New Mexico team right here. I really do. I really, really do. Next up, we got Baylor, Colgate, Colgate. Not their first go around in the NCAA tournament. That could be a lot tougher game than people expect it to be. I don't know if it's gonna be a blowout. Um, 
but Baylor should win with their guard play. They should win this game. Next up, seven seed Dayton, ten seed um, Nevada. Two teams I have not really watched at all this year, man. Two teams I have not really watched at all. But I like the Mountain West, man. I like the Mountain West Conference. They got six teams in this year, and some of them might have even been underseeded, in my opinion. So I really like the Mountain West. So here I'm just going to go with the Mountain West team. I'm going to go Nevada, and then I'm going to go Arizona over Long Beach State. That Long Beach State story, though, is an incredible story. The coach and the team and the um, AD agreed to part ways, and then he got to the conference tournament and won the damn tournament. <laughs> now they're in the NCAA tournament. That's insane, man. That's crazy. That's and he I, the coach even said he said we stopped playing for for um to, we stopped playing together and started playing for each other, man. That's that's a team coming together right there for their coach, and they that that's that's a special moment just them reaching the tournament right there. So all right, let's head up back to the top of the bracket where we got one C North Carolina versus nine C Michigan State, and um like I said, I don't like to go against Tom Izzo. But that was for the first round. I think R.J. Davis, uh, Baycott, um, Ingram. I think that's a little too much for Michigan State. I think I think North Carolina wins this game, moves on to the Sweet 16. Then here, very very interesting matchup. I could go with the Cinderella run, Cinderella run here for Grand Canyon and say they beat Alabama too. But I'm not gonna do it. I'm not that confident in Grand Canyon now. I'm confident they could beat St. Mary's, not Alabama. I got Alabama going to a Sweet 16, and maybe a little SEC bias, you know, maybe a little bit, because I think the SEC was a really good conference this year. But I think Alabama should be able to beat Grand Canyon. Plus, Alabama like to play that up and down play style that Grand Canyon like to play. I think Alabama just gonna be better at it. Now this game right here, Baylor and New Mexico. I already got New Mexico beating Clemson. I like the guard play. I told you I like Baylor's guard play. I think they match up these two teams really well. I think New Mexico pull an upset. New Mexico, that 11 seed, I think they don't want they the team. You know, every year you got a double digit seed that make it out there to that Sweet 16. I think they the one this year. I think they the one this year, man. I got New Mexico winning this game. Um, then we got um, Arizona, Nevada. I'm go Arizona. So that makes it Arizona, New Mexico, and it makes it North Carolina, Alabama. North Carolina, Alabama won four matchup in the Sweet 16. I'm gonna go with North Carolina to reach the um the Elite Eight, and then I'm gonna go with does the Cinderella run in here for New Mexico, or do I go Arizona? I'm gonna go Arizona. I think Caleb Love's gonna have a great tournament, and it sets up. The incredible matchup, North Carolina, Arizona. They call it the Caleb Love game. Obviously, Caleb Love transferred from North Carolina, um, and now he gets to face North Carolina for a chance to go to the Final Four. And a little, little insider note, um, look, fun fact, little insider stuff. If you didn't know why he transferred, apparently R.J. Davis was like, you know, there was a dynamic duo, him and R.J. Davis, the year they made that run to the Final Four. Apparently. You no, know, he started talking to one of his, I guess, to who Kayla Love might have been talking to on the women's North Carolina team, Deja Kelly, they best player. Uh, apparently, Kayla Love and her had a little something going, and RJ came and scooped her up. I don't know. That's just what I was hearing from the insiders, and that, that threw off the team chemistry, and Kayla Love got up out of there. So that definitely got a little extra chip on his shoulder playing them here in the um, Elite Eight. But... I think North Carolina wins this game, even even still with the Caleb Love effect and all that. I think North Carolina head, heads to the Final Four, man. I feel like they've been a Final Four team all season long. Yes, they just lost to NC State in the, in the ACC Championship game. I think they still a Final Four team. I think they've been a Final Four team all year long, which means our first Final Four matchup, two one seeds. Two one seeds. Now, last year, obviously, you had three teams. FAU, San Diego State, and, um, and, um, golly, well, I can't remember. FAU, San Diego State, and, um, and Miami. Miami. That, they didn't even make the tournament this year. Miami. So, you had three unexpected teams in the Final Four last year. I think this year we get some big dogs in the Final Four. 
I think this year we're getting the big dogs in the Final Four. And even though it's been a year full of upsets, I think we get the big dogs in the Final Four this year. So two one seeds, UConn, North Carolina. That's going to be a hell of a matchup. Um, let's find out what the other two matchups going to be by going over here to the South region. And we have Houston, who's going to move on against Longwood in the 116 matchup. Then we have a very, very good 8 9 matchup. This is going to be a game I'm definitely going to tune into. Nebraska and AM. Um, Nebraska, I just got a chance to watch both of these teams here in, later in the season. Nebraska, I just watched them play um, Illinois for the Big Ten Championship game. No, 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 that was Wisconsin. But I seen Nebraska in the semifinal game against Illinois. Um, I reacted to that game, and Nebraska got some shooters. They got some shooters. But I just seen AM beat my Kentucky team twice here in the last couple of weeks. Twice. And I think AM, as long as they come to play, they're one of the best offensive rebound teams in the, in the country. Um, Wade Taylor is one of the best guards in the country. Wade Taylor could have a big day here on the big stage against Nebraska. And I think AM wins this game. I think they move on to face Houston and what would be a, a, a Texas showdown right there. That would be a hell of a game. And moving on, we got another 12-5 game, which a lot of people are going to pick the 12 seed, James Madison. And rightfully so, James Madison, 31-3. and Hell of a team. Hell of a season. Wisconsin just played in the Big Ten Championship game. They got hot towards the end of the year. And I just got a chance to really watch Wisconsin. I watched them earlier in the year play Purdue. They lost. I just got a chance to watch them throughout this conference chat, this um, Big Ten tournament, beat Purdue, um, lose a good one to Illinois. I like the guard play Wisconsin. I know James Madison, we're talking about they guard play. No experienced guards. They just won 31 games. And that's going to be a 12-5 matchup. Everybody gonna, they, that's going to be a Cinderella team. Everybody going to want to pick. I like Wisconsin. Got a, a three-guard lineup. And I like all three of them guards. I like they, I like they bigs. They solid. They can st stretch the floor out. I think Wisconsin win this game, man. I don't think James Madison get them. I think Wisconsin win. I think Duke win. That set up a Duke-Wisconsin game. That's going to be a fun one. That's going to be a really good game. Uh, moving on, we got we got 6 seed Texas Tech versus 11 seed NC State who played their way into the tournament by getting an automatic big win in the ACC tournament. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't have made the tournament, which goes to show we have about four teams that won their conference tournaments that – wasn't going to get in the tournament, which left out four teams that probably should have got in the tournament. The Big East got snubbed. A couple of teams, um, I think St. John's, man, I think they should have made it. I think um, you had Providence out there in the Big East. I thought they should have made it. You had um, you had some teams that, that lost their spot because teams that weren't supposed to be in the tournament won their conference championship games. So, yeah, but um, <clears throat> I'm going I'm going with the hot team, though. I always love to pick those teams that get hot at the right time and start playing their best basketball. That's NC State right now. I'm going NC State to beat Texas Tech in that 11-6 matchup. And then next, here we go. Well, y'all see it right here. Y'all know y'all see it right here, man. I ain't showing no bias throughout this, though. I ain't showing no bias throughout this. But we're going to beat Oakland for sure. Come on now. We're going to beat Oakland for sure. Come on now. Big Blue Nation, we moving on to face NC State in the round of 32. Right here, <clears throat> another SEC team, Florida, just lost in the SEC uh, championship game. Great team. Then you got Boise State versus Colorado. Now, my bracket can get, it can get completely screwed if this go wrong. But I think Colorado wins that first four game, and then I think they beat Florida. I'm putting Colorado in the second round. Now, this, this I'm doing this bracket before the first four games get played, so it can get completely completely screwed up if they if um if Colorado doesn't win that first game and technically 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 the first four once the bracket set I should be allowed to go back and do another bracket if Colorado does in fact lose I'm just saying but I got Colorado winning that game and beating Florida in the next game I like it's always seems like it's a team every year that playing that first four that gets to that second weekend because one they got a game under their belt then they play the game a couple couple days later. They got a game on their belt. Boom. And they just ride that momentum. And I think Colorado, who just played in the Pac-12 championship game, they didn't win it. 
but they just played in the conference championship game against Oregon. Oregon, another team that stole somebody's bid. Um, so that was a hot team they played. I think Colorado's a really good team. And 7 10 matchups are almost like the 8 9 matchups. 7 ain't that big of a difference between 7 and 10. You know, so those are also always close matchups. Then you got Marquette. Um, I've been hearing a lot about Marquette. I actually got to see them play the other day. But apparently they're missing their point guard, one of their best players on their team. Hopefully he's back. If he's not back, I'll, I Colorado could steal that one too, but I don't think they do. I don't think they do. But um, hopefully Marquette do get their best player back, one of their best players. All right, moving up back to the round of 32 here for the South region. We got Houston versus Texas a and I'm going to go that what this is a tough one right here. Houston, I don't understand, man. I've been I've been saying this Houston year all year till y'all got, you know, till I saw the region y'all was in. I've been saying this was y'all year all year to reach the final four, but um it didn't help y'all just got 30 piece in y'all Big 12 championship game. I I don't know about y'all, but I don't I don't they have no injuries, nothing none of that. And you just you a one seed and you just got 30 piece like, did you not care about the Big 12 championship game or what? Like, how do you get 30 piece? Losing by 10, 15, okay. 30 piece? That's insane, man. And I think AM, these two teams are very similar. They actually match up very well. AM, one of the best rebounding teams in the country, offensive rebounding teams. Houston, really good at, you know, getting their offensive rebounds and stuff like that. Houston also struggles to score sometimes. Um, they struggle shooting the ball from the outside sometimes. And so does AM. But and I like the guard play once again. I think the guard play for Andrew matches up. Wade Taylor once again could be one of those guys that can step up and have a huge performance here in March. I'm going with the nine over one upset. I think Houston is the first number one seed to go down in this year's tournament. I think they go down in around the round of 32, and Andrew moves on to the Sweet 16, and um, Duke. Versus West Coast. And them, back to one more thing on AM. If they play how they played against us, yeah, they for sure can win this game and get to the Sweet 16. They like turn up to a whole nother notch when they play us, but maybe that's because we so bad defensively, but still. Um, moving on, 4 5 matchup Duke and Wisconsin. Duke and Wisconsin. Um, man, I told y'all I like Wisconsin. I, I, didn't, I didn't really start liking their guard play. I started the last couple games I didn't watch. I like how they playing. They playing at a high level right now. Duke, I ain't been that big of a Duke team fan this year. Um, I'm never really a big Duke fan, but I didn't like how they... I don't know about Duke this year, man. I don't know. I don't... I think Wisconsin matches up well. I think Wisconsin can beat them. I'm going Wisconsin. We got a 5 and a 9 in the Sweet 16 right there, man. We got Wisconsin versus Texas A&M. What a game. That's going to be um, two completely different styles right there. Uh, moving on. Round of 32. The lower part of the bracket, Kentucky. Versus NC State. Yes, NC State comes in. One of the hottest teams in the tournament. Yes, I do got them winning that first round matchup. But they're not matching up in any sort of way with our guard play and our bigs. It's wraps. It's over for them. Kentucky moves on to the Sweet 16. Now we got Marquette versus Colorado. Remember, I got Colorado beating Boise in the first four. Then beating Florida. And then this is when their run ends here. I think Marquette's too good of a team. I got them moving on. So we got a 2-3 matchup in the Sweet 16 of the South region. And a 5-9 with Wisconsin and Texas A&M. And then moving on out of Texas A&M and Wisconsin. Whew, man, I ain't going to lie. A&M get hot enough just to reach the Sweet 16. They... They could be playing at a high level, but I think Wisconsin as well. I got Wisconsin beating AM and and I have Kentucky being Marquette. I think Marquette's very good defensively, um, but I just, man, I'm telling y'all, this is not any Kentucky bias just because I'm a Kentucky fan. I just think our guard play is special this year. I think Reed Shepard's going to have a, a incredible tournament. Rob Dillingham's going to have an incredible tournament. Already two top ten picks. Um, I, th I think we, I think Marquette can't score with us. Now, hopefully, our defense, if we reach the Sweet 16, hopefully our defense is is on point. But even still, I don't think Marquette can outscore us. 
and I'm going to go Kentucky right here. That leaves a Kentucky-Wisconsin Elite 8 matchup. Now, I've been talking about Wisconsin guard play. I really like the guard play. Um, but you're not, you're, not, you're not matching us. You're not matching us at all. And this is actually the highest scoring Wisconsin team since I think um I heard I heard on the tele, on the selection show they talked about it. I think since like nineteen ninety or something like that. So like I said, the guard play at Wisconsin, they score the ball. They, this Wisconsin team can score the ball. But I think I I, I can't go against us, man. I think we, I, I've been saying all year we have a final four team. We put it all together here in March. And I think I think this bracket sets up perfect for us to reach the fresh, especially if we don't have to go through Houston. And I think Houston get beat early. I think we could beat Houston or Mac. I think we could beat any team in this bracket. That's why I have us going to the Final Four. I think this bracket, this region of the bracket sets up so perfect for Kentucky to reach a Final Four. So perfect. At least an Elite Eight. I think an Elite Eight. Elite Eight. A Sweet 16 is our floor. That's the game against Marquette. That's the floor. We have to reach the Sweet 16. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But a Final Four, championships obviously are ceiling. But I think, yeah, Final Four is very reachable going through this bracket. So that leaves us with three teams um, in the Final Four. A UConn, a North Carolina, and a Kentucky. I'm telling you, you got some blue blood schools right here. Three of them. After last year, we had three teams, FAU, San Diego State and Miami that you know kind of made huge runs. This year you getting the back you getting the blue buzz black uh, back in the tournament in the final four, which is gonna be great for entertainment purposes, just for seeing some really, really good games. And um here to the last region, we got Purdue region. Midwest. Purdue will not get upset this year by a 16 seed. They will not lose to Montana State or Grambling. Um, I think Montana State wins that oh, first four game, and then Purdue beats Montana State. Whatever, let's move on. Utah State and TCU. Um, I'm going TCU, man. I like the Big 12. You know, the Big 12, they just kind of beat up on each other. That's one of the toughest conferences. And I think TCU got some, um, some fantastic guard play. I think they move on. They play fast as well. I think they're going to get up and down on Utah State. I think they win that game. Um... Another 12-5 matchup in which a lot of people are gonna pick the upset, and I want them. I didn't pick the I didn't pick the um the James Madison one. That was another one of the 30 win teams in the tournament. That's a 12 seed. I'm picking Midnight State. I got them being Gonzaga. I ain't been big on Gonzaga all year long. And how how the hell did St. Mary's beat Gonzaga twice? And they got the same seed. I don't know. Maybe probably Gonzaga got some some decent non-conference wins, and St. Mary's might don't have any. But both of them are overrated, in my opinion. Gonzaga and or Gonzaga and St. Mary's, and I got both of them losing to the 12 seed. Grand Canyon being St. Mary's, McNeese State being um Gonzaga. Will Wade took over at McNeese State and had won 30 games, went 30 and three. Had an incredible year. He's a hell of a coach. He gonna have them boys ready to go. They're going to beat Gonzaga. And then you got Kansas versus Sanford. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty whether Kansas is going to have a big man, um, Hunter Dickinson, and the other guy, I think, McCullough. A lot of uncertainty. If they had them two, they win this game. I'm just going off the facts that I know right now. I don't know if they had them two. And they've been looking horrible without them. If they don't have them two, Sanford, a 29-win team, nearly 30 wins, a 29-win team, Sanford, a 13 seed, is going to pull off the upset. I got a 12-13 matchup there in the second round. You got to be bold when you're making these brackets. You got to put some upsets in that thing. I got a 12-13 matchup right there. Sanford beats Kansas. Um, moving on, South Carolina versus Oregon. Oregon, one of the hottest teams in the country. Another team that stole a bid winning the Pac-12 um, championship game. South Carolina, a decent team. They've been very solid all year long. But Oregon wins this game. I got Oregon. They the hottest one of the hottest teams. Same thing, same reason I had NC State winning their 11 6 matchup. Um, another team that stole a bit and got an 11 seed. I got both of those teams moving on. They hot right now. They playing their best basketball. You always want to pick a team that's playing their best basketball right now in March. I got Oregon winning that game. And then I got Creighton versus Akron. 
crazy. I ho did y'all see the accurate game? That was crazy. The way they even got to the tournament. A kid on the other team fouled when his team took the lead by one because he wasn't aware of the score in the time or something. I don't know. It was the most idiotic shit ever. And um, Akron won hit two free throws, won the game. Crane's going to move on and play Oregon in the second round. Here, ah, same thing with the... I don't know. Maybe I'm liking the Colorado schools. I went out to Colorado last December, man. It was very nice. I don't know. Maybe I'm liking the Colorado schools. But same situation where our bracket could be completely ruined. If Colorado State doesn't win its first game, it could be completely ruined because I got Colorado State beating Virginia. Then I got them beating Texas. Colorado State to the round of 32. This side, this Midwest region is absolutely nuts. I got a 10, 11, 12, and 13 all moving to the second round and a 9, which is not 9 over 8, not really upset, but still. I got all lower seeds right now moving on besides Creighton and Purdue as the only two higher seeds I have moving on and Tennessee. I got Tennessee being St. Peter's. Um, I know a whole lot about St. Peter's, obviously, and I don't think St. Peter's beats another two seed this year from the SEC. I got Tennessee, Don Connect. Gonna do his thing. Don Connect, first time on a big, big stage. He's gonna go crazy. Open up a lot of eyes. Yari has opened up a lot of eyes this season. He's gonna open up even more. He's gonna go crazy and have a great tournament. And um, let's go back up. So, this second round matchup right here is Tennessee versus Colorado State. I'm showing a lot of love to the Mountain West right now. I'm showing a lot of love. I got New Mexico, obviously, in the Sweet 16. Um, I would damn it. And San Diego State got a chance if they beat Auburn in that second round. They got a chance to hit the suit. Mount West. I'm showing a lot of love. I got, I got, I could be completely wrong right now with the Mount West, but obviously the committee think the Mount West is good too. They got six teams in. While the Big East only got three. Um, moving on, round of 32, we got Purdue versus TCU. Um, I'm going Purdue, man. I'm going Purdue. I'm not a huge believer in Purdue, but I do think they at least reached the Sweet 16 for sure. And then Sanford, Mini State, I got Mini State. I think this with the upsets here, it sets up well for Purdue. No, it sets up very well for them. Um, Purdue also got one of the easiest regions, in my opinion. I think this is the easiest region to make it out of. So they got lucky with that. Um, Oregon, Creighton, Creighton, a fantastic, um, team, they got Baylor, um, uh, I can't remember his last name, but he's a really good player, um, but Oregon, once again, I got him going to Sweet 16, um, I can't remember their, na their head coach name at this time, but for some reason in March, he always have these, these, this Oregon team ready to play, they always seem to make a run, um, um, Every other year type stuff, they always seem to make one of those runs to a Sweet 16. This year, they made a run in the conference tournament, winning that. They the hottest team, one of the hottest teams in the country. They beat Creighton and move on to the um, Sweet 16. I have Tennessee beating Colorado State. And we got Tennessee moving on to a Sweet 16. So now your two Sweet 16 matchups, you got a 112, you got a 211. So 11 and a 12 moves on to play the one and the two. And I think this is where both of those teams, Cinderella runs in as Purdue beats Manic State and Tennessee beats Oregon. And now for the team that's going to play Kentucky in the final four and our final, final four matchup. Ah, man, y'all going to like this one. My SEC folks, y'all going to like this one. We get, a, we get a third matchup of Tennessee versus Kentucky. I got Tennessee being Purdue. I don't think Purdue makes it to the final four. Zach Eady, somehow you're back-to-back -back player of the year, and you've never reached the Final Four. Um, I don't see it happening. A one, two one seeds, a two and a three seed. We got the big dogs back in the Final Four this year. Um, UConn versus North Carolina, Kentucky versus Tennessee. Gonna be a hell. That's that right there will be a hell of a Final Four right there. You already got people talking about you no, know, and I'm one of them that said. The women's cup final four could be better than the men's, but if you got these four teams, hell no, nah, this is what you want to see right here: UConn, North Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, and I think I'm gonna pick both at the same time. Tell y'all the two teams that's moving on. I think it's gonna be a rematch of the 2014 final four matchup semifinal, 
and our rematch of the 2011 National Championship game, UConn versus Kentucky. I got UConn being Carolina. I got Kentucky being Tennessee for the second time this year. And, oh, man, if y'all don't know, doing a little history, you know, obviously 2011, Kimball Walker and UConn made that hell of a run to the Final Four, beat Kentucky in the National Championship game. Um, I was a big Kimball Walker fan back then, obviously as a Kentucky fan as well, but man, that one was, that was an incredible game. I love seeing the run UConn made that year. That was insane. Um, I was a huge Kimball Walker fan that whole year. And, um, so if it was going to be anybody that was going to beat us that year, it was UConn. And then 2014, Sebastian Napier, he did it himself. He was a freshman on that 2011 team. He did it himself, took UConn to the final four. And won a national championship, beating us in the semifinal game. And I think that was the year we had. Um, was that the year we had Brendan Knight, Julius Randle, and them? I think that that I think that was that year. That hey, we was like an eight seed that year. That was we weren't even supposed to reach the final four that year. That was a hell of a game. Oh man, man, oh man, oh man. Who do I go with? UConn or Kentucky? UConn or Kentucky, man. Honestly. Honestly, and y'all going to say, y'all might say I'm biased just picking Kentucky to win the national championship if I pick them. I ain't picked yet. Y'all might say I'm biased, but my reasoning, if we make it this far, if we get hot enough and we play defense well enough to make it all the way to the national championship game, I don't see nothing stopping us at that point. I got Kentucky beating UConn in a, a very entertaining game in which... I think we got big man to rotate against they big man. Um, even though I do like they guard play, Newton, Castle, the guys they got that can get to the rim, that can shoot the three ball. Um, we got all that too. And if we get hot enough to make it this far, I don't see us letting up. I don't see us letting up and losing this game. We already lost twice to y'all in the Final Four. This decade, I don't, well not this decade, 2011-2014, but... Ah oh, man, I got Big Blue Nation winning it, man. Big, I know everybody they mama's going to pick UConn to win it. I'm not going that way. Let's go something different. UConn's not. They picking UConn like they have no losses this year. Like they're just an unbeatable-ass team. They're they're beatable. And if we make it this far and get all the way to the National Championship game, we can beat them. I'm telling y'all. it's gonna. It might take a special performance, but we got special players that can have special games. Antonio Reeves, Reed Shepard, Rob Dillingham. We got some guys. I think we I, I think we win this game, man. Um, how many total points will be scored? Hell, I don't know. Shit. Um I thought it lets you pick the actual score. I don't know how many total points. The final score of this game would be if I had to predict the score. I'm predicting Kentucky wins it. Eighty-three to eighty. Eighty-three to eighty. Yeah. So that's a um let me see how many points that is. Hundred what, hundred and sixty-three? Alright guys, here we go, man. We got the first bracket. Well, the only bracket that I'm doing filled out, submitted. Oh, I'm not gonna do all that. All right, man, Kentucky, they my champ. Now y'all can say it's gonna be extremely biased, but I don't give a damn. Big Blue Nation, baby, we're going all the way. Hey, man, if y'all new, hit the sub button, leave a like on the video. Uh, tell me y'all picks down in the comments. Put y'all final four picks in the comments. Let's let's have a conversation. Put y'all final four picks in the comments. Tell me any matchups y'all saw that I picked that y'all didn't personally like or the ones y'all did like. Either one. Tell me in the comments. Let's have a discussion. Talk to me. 